Hey, Walter Sorrels back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, making a knife etching tube. Okay, so some of you guys are going to say that this whole project is blindingly obvious and why waste time on it? I'll get to the answer to that question in a minute, but first the project. Today I'll be making a little tank for etching blades as well as for etching sword and knife fittings. The tank will contain ferric chloride etchant and will be made from PVC. This is an amazingly, some might say, idiotically simple project. So, here's my justification for bothering to show this very elementary build. Everybody watching this video is not an experienced maker, so I just want to expose folks who might not have joined the PVC religion to one of the most versatile and easily available materials in the world, PVC or polyvinyl chloride plumbing pipe. I've used PVC to build temporary furniture, a manifold for the air supply of the smelt that I did this past weekend, target stands for shooting competitions, light stands. I mean, it just goes on and on. So if you haven't been in the plumbing aisle at your local big box hardware store, you are missing out. Okay, on to the project. There are tons of uses for etching in knife making. Etching Damascus to bring out the pattern in the steel, etching various fittings for the same purposes, bringing out hamones, making certain kinds of blade finishes, bunch of stuff. In this case, I made a Japanese sword guard known as a tsuba, which didn't quite fit into the mouth of my old etch tank. So, off to Lowe's for PVC. PVC pipe, like all plumbing pipe, is designated by its internal diameter. I'm etching a three and a quarter inch wide suba, so I'll pick out a piece of four inch ID pipe, and that's gonna fit just about anything that I could imagine etching. There are a million little elbows and stoppers and things that can be attached to the pipe, so I've settled on two internally threaded couplings and two screw-in stoppers or plugs. The one that will function as the bottom piece will be flat so that the pipe will stand unsupported, and the top has a square stud for easy removal. I'll be putting it together with PVC cement and primer. First, with PVC, you want to make sure all the joints are clean and you want to test to make sure they fit correctly. Nothing worse than cementing something and then realizing it won't fit together. So first, I'm going to slather on some primer. This just kind of cleans some of the stuff off and prepares the plastic to receive the cement. Then the cement itself. If you think the idea here is to make this pretty, you are very much mistaken. The whole goal here is to make it watertight. When in doubt, more cement. Then the bottom plug. Make sure you insert it in the correct orientation. Unlike conventional screw threads, pipe thread is designed to narrow and therefore tighten as you go. So if you put the plug in backwards, it won't go all the way and not only will your tank not stand up, but it's probably going to leak. Now on to the top coupling. And we're all done. I let the joints cure overnight. Key point here, very important, before filling the tank with a highly corrosive liquid, which is what ferric chloride is, fill it with water to make sure the joints are nice and tight. Mine had a small leak first time around, so more cement slathering was required. 
but now it passes QC and is good to go. Everybody's got their own approach to ferric chloride etching. It kind of depends on what your goals are. Personally, I like it very heavily diluted, roughly 20 to 1. This makes etching a little slower, but I never get pitting or other gross looking etching artifacts that sometimes happen if you etch really hard. In other words, if you etch with undiluted ferric. It's also nice for subtler effects like hamones. That way I can kind of pull it in and out, and look at it a whole bunch. I just feel like I have more control with a real dilute solution. So, in goes this blank tsuba. A few minutes later, out it comes with this striking pattern. By the way, if any of these catch your fancy and you might be interested in using one of them on a project that you're working on, check waltersorrelsblades.com. I've got some fittings listed there for sale. So, general lesson here, if you're looking to make any sort of frame or container in your shop, or probably a ton of other stuff I've never even thought of, PVC is always a great place to start. Obviously, it's not as strong as metal and it'll melt or catch fire in hot applications, but for cheapness, versatility, and ease of construction, PVC cannot be beat. Drag your imagination over to the plumbing section and see what happens. Take care, guys, and keep making those knives. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. WalterSorrelsBlades.com